Aloha Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It's Shabbat right now. And it's also a holiday, you guys. It's the ending of Sukkot. Right now it's called Simchat Torah. And it's when the Torah is finished re being read at the end of the year. And then we begin again with Genesis. So it's an extra special evening. And we are here for the final quarter activation. The final leg of this monthly cycle. And this is a collective activation, so it's for all of us. It applies to the individual as well as the collective. So while you guys are tuning in, I'm just gonna let you know you may wanna grab some water. I wanna know where you all are tuning in from. Where in the world are you? Okay, right now we're creating a grid, a web, as we all tune in from different parts of the world. And I will start, I'm in Sedona, Arizona. Where are you? Miami, New York, California. Go ahead and, and drop a comment, let me know where you're tuning in from. Washington, what's up everybody tuning in? Drop a comment, let me know where you're tuning in from. Oregon, Texas, awesome. Phoenix, Arizona, California. Hi everybody. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Drop a comment, Ohio, London. So you see everybody tuning in is, is just from a different part of our world. Florida. So we're all going to unite in this one message and that's powerful. We're going to unite all of these places in this one message, in this one frequency. Mexico, Colombia. What's up everybody? So good to see you all. So it is the final quarter moon, Illinois. Missy's from Illinois, Boston. So the final quarter activation, again, for those of you who are new to these, to these activations, they happen every single week and they've been going on for years and an awesome community has built around it. And it has actually nothing to do with the moon. The moon is only used as a measurement of time. The light of the moon is reflecting what's really going on with the light behind all things. So it's just a, a reflection of our own selves, like everything else, right? So the final quarter moon is all about, all right, last week we had the full moon. That was about the fullness of the light, seeing the bigger picture of things, seeing the whole picture. All of the puzzle pieces are now put together. And this week is about integrating, closing up this past month cycle that we've been going through and starting the new one. So the final quarter is probably my favorite. I know everybody really loves the new moon, full moon, but the final quarter is my favorite because we're at a time where we're really in between worlds. We're sealing up the old so that we can make a space for the new. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're tuning in from everyone. New Zealand, England, sweet. California, so good to see you all here. So I'm just gonna shuffle while you all are tuning in. And go ahead and let go of whatever you've been carrying today. Any thoughts, heavy emotions, whatever, even if it's good stuff, even if you got some really good news on your mind, uh, we wanna make a space. So whatever it is you're holding on to, just ask it to take a seat for this moment. And we're knowing together as one that if we are doing this work for the highest good of all as one, for the sake of the creator, that we are granted this wish of having all of our stuff be set aside. And in this moment, we know that even if up until now, we have not been able to put our stuff aside and we've been carrying a heavy burden, maybe for lifetimes, in this moment, we know that it is our right to have this prayer granted that this stuff be set aside. We ask God, creator, source, great spirit, please know I'm doing this work for you. And you know, God, great spirit, you see me. There's no hiding. There ain't no hiding place from the father of creation. Hey, Bob Marley. So we are authentically doing this work. And because we're doing it, 
God, universe, creator, whatever, wants us to have all of our energy to do this work. And so at least for this moment, we're going to be given that grace of our stuff being put aside for this work. And then if at the end of this work, you want to pick up that weight again, you're not done carrying that burden, go ahead. But for now, let's open up. We don't need to create a space. All things already exist. We just need to tune into it. So what is the greatest space that already exists? It's the infinite space of the heart where I will meet you here now. Okay. Go ahead and connect to the deck however you know how. It's all about the principle of mentality, the principle of the mind. How are you believing? How are you imagining connecting with this deck? It's all about what you believe, what you see. So you can see a string of light going from your inner eye to the deck, from your heart to the deck, from your solar plexus to the deck. You can see yourself sitting here right now. You can see yourself like shrinking and jumping into the deck, whatever you want to do. Just loosen up, have fun, and be here now. Okay. So what is our biggest struggle with integrating everything that's gone on this month, the lessons, the blessings, the challenges, all of it. What is our biggest struggle? And in revealing the struggle, hidden within it will be the, the key, the neutralizing effect, which will ultimately transform this challenge into the gift, which will be the bridge into our next cycle, which will be a new moon next week. So this is the challenge. Two cards came out, feel the need to shuffle them back, pick one. Okay, this is the challenge. And what are we preparing for, for the new moon? What's that gonna be? All right, we'll just do these two. Okay, so starting with the challenge, the thing that we need to focus on right now as we close up this last cycle and make space for the new. Queen of Swords. Sovereignty, independence. Queen of Swords is the heart of the challenge. So the challenge right now, at this point in the cycle, in regards to the Queen of Swords would look like, where is our heart in the challenges we're facing right now? The struggles in our relationship, the struggles with our jobs, the struggles with our environment, whatever it is, our collective struggles across the world, politically, physically. What are all these struggles and how is our heart in it? How are we bringing our heart and our compassion into the challenge? And the biggest thing that's flashing really brightly in my mind's eye is how are we having a heart for ourselves? Letting go of things, cutting the cord to things that aren't serving our heart's highest fulfillment. We've been struggling to kind of play this role of the severity aspect of the Divine Mother, right? Because the right pillar, the masculine, is actually the mercy, the pillar of mercy. And the left pillar, the feminine, is actually the pillar of severity. Because there are both sides, the masculine and the feminine, within each of us, that mercy and severity. But to bring balance to that receptive femininity, it had to be, it has to be the pillar of severity. And in order to bring balance to the masculine pillar, that active force, right, that Mars, that action, there needed to, it needed to be, it needs to be the pillar of mercy. So this to me is popping out as this challenge we're experiencing with being that stern mother, with being loving, but also knowing that we have shit to do. Knowing that there are cords to be cut and no one's going to do it for us. We have to do it ourselves. It's up to us to first recognize 
what is not serving the highest good for myself? Because it all begins here. It all begins within, and then it's reflected without. So how can we, at this time, recognize what is not for the highest good of our heart? What is not bringing us joy? What is not allowing us to have that foundation of joy so that we can be our best self? Where do we need to be more firm with our boundaries? Where have our boundaries been stepped over, been crossed, and we have not been firm enough? Where have we allowed ourselves to be a doormat, to be walked all over? It's time to, with heart, cut the cords that need to be cut. There are things that maybe we're holding on to Things like work, relationships, friendships or romance, family, whatever. Uh, situations that we've just been kind of pussyfooting around. It's kind of been like, I'll let this slide. I'll let this slide. I'll let that slide. Oh, they just pushed this boundary, but eh. they've been They've been pushing that boundary forever, so. No. It's time to say no. And it's time to say no with heart. First, before we say that no, feeling that conviction within us, that confidence to say no. First, making that peace within ourselves so that we don't have that inner conflict. You know, maybe part of us has been not completely owning that no and that boundary because some part of us feels like, I'm afraid. I don't know what to say. They may be angry. I'm worried about their response. Whatever it is. I don't deserve to set this boundary. I don't have a right. So it's important to first go within and resolve that. What, is, what has been holding me back all this time from setting boundaries? Why have I felt like it's not okay to be completely myself and own that? I shared something earlier today or yesterday. It was find who you are and be that on purpose. This feels really connected to this card and I felt like it's been a collective theme lately. How are we holding back parts of ourselves because we are afraid of what the response is gonna be? We shouldn't just par partially be ourselves. We should be ourselves and express from that space of confidence and conviction in who we are. And so first we need to find that, that solidity within, in our center, in knowing who we are and telling ourselves, it's okay to be you. Of course, it's more than okay. It's what the world needs. I, I, need, I need me to do this. We need we to do this. Can you just be yourself? You can be yourself, so it's time to be it. This is the kind of dialogue that needs to go on inside. And then when you feel like you're no longer at conflict within, when you feel confident in who you are and who you came here to be, then it's time to outwardly express that. And anything that threatens that, or gets in the way of that, that's where the boundaries need to be set. You see, it's like a step-by-step -step process. First, it's going within, getting clear within, knowing who you are, knowing that's more than okay, it's needed. And then bringing that outward into expression, actualizing it, crystallizing it. And from there, the response will come right? It's not about worrying about the response the whole time. No, you worry about doing your inner work. Then when the response comes, you will know what is not in alignment with who I've discovered I really am and what is in alignment with that. And so you allow those things that are in alignment into your life with conviction, with grace, with ease. Yes, I know now this is harmonious with my inner world. I welcome it. Or no, this is not in alignment with what I've just set so solidly in place within my center, within my mind's eye. This vision I've just solidified within my mind's eye, within my heart, this is not okay. This does not resonate with that. No, no. That's what she does, that's what she says, okay? She either says yes, welcome it in, or no, this is not a part of who I am, but first you need to know who you are. So that's the current challenge. Staying in your heart, 
holding that vision of who you are, who you truly are within your mind's eye, within your heart, in your center. And from there, you'll know what cords need to be cut. But stay in that space. Stay in that space. Loving yourself. Loving everyone, even those who've done you wrong. Loving them and at the same time saying goodbye. No. Okay. Moving on. Why are we doing this work? Where are we headed? What do we have to look forward to with the new moon? Yay, 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 yay. So this is a major arcanum card. Card number 11, despite modern manipulations, they will tell you it's eight, it's not, it's 11. Um, in ancient Egypt, she is known as the Enchantress. Here she's called Strength. So why are we going through this right now? Why are we having to create this solid vision and feeling frequency of who we really are? And, and moving forward, defending that, protecting that, honoring that. Why? 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 It's so that we can move to this. Eleven, who, by the way, is the evolution of the high priestess, number two. She is the next level of the high priestess. Eleven, reduced to a single digit, is two. So she is the high priestess to the higher power. So it's, we're doing this work so that we can bring who we truly are inside to the outside. So that we can find our true strength. So that we can rise to this highest version of ourselves. And by the way, the tarot is a cyclical story. So I'm not saying this is the be all and end all. There are always more layers to reach. It's a cyclical, circular unfolding. So there will be new layers of this. But this is where we're at right now. This is where we're headed. We're reaching a new layer of being in touch with ourselves, with our intuition, with our greatest strength, which, which lies in our receptivity to source energy. We have to be clear on who we are. We have to be connected to our hearts. Right now is a great time to purify, to fast, to cleanse, to humble ourselves in understanding that our power, our individual little power, who we are, you know, me, Rebecca, in this life, no, it's nothing compared to the power of the one. So you can see it in the number, right, 11. One reflects one. 11 is also, uh, the 11th house of, house of the Zodiac is Aquarius, which the whole message of Aquarius is as above, so below, as within, so without. Aquarius is a water bearer, but it's an air sign because it's pouring water from the heavens and that water is symbolizing consciousness. And when that water pours below, it reflects the heavens above. Just like in Hebrew, the word for water is mayim and the word for heaven is shamayim. Mayim, shamayim. To reflection. So this is what we're moving toward, this next level of who we really are, activating our intuition to this next level. Right? And the only way we can get to this is if we cut away whatever is in our path that is keeping us from being the best version of ourselves, from staying connected to our hearts. Whatever is in the way of us staying connected to that holy truth of who we really holy and holy, holy and holy are, that needs to go or we won't reach this. If we don't do that work, there will still be things in the way. And again, there's always layers. There's always, there's always that next level to reach. But this is why we're doing the work. She's like, I will not let this crap get in the way anymore. I've been in this softer space of the mother and I've been like, it's okay that they did this to me. It's okay that this person has crossed my boundaries 15 million times. It's all, it's all right, I'm compassionate, love everyone. No. And it's like, mm, yes, but the mother also has that severity. Okay, she has to do this for herself and her self of which we are all a part, the one self. We have to be fierce and say no to this stuff for our descendants, for the future generations, for the ones to come. It's not just about us. It's about the one. So we have to understand from this archetypal perspective how important the work is right now and always to say no to those things that we wouldn't want for our daughters, for our sons, for our grandkids, for our, our children's children's children. We have to say no. It doesn't matter how humble we want to play. Like, oh, 
it's okay, let them beat me up, I'm gonna be a martyr. No. Is that what you would want for your kids, 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 kids? For the generations to come? No. It's not okay. When something's not okay, it's time to say no. No more. Because together we want to rise to this place. Remember, this is also a collective reading. If we together want to rise to this next level of actualizing our collective psychic intuition to reach our true strength, which lies in receptivity to source, humility, opening up to the strength of God, great spirit, source, whatever you want to call it, so that that power can move through us, remembering we're just the vessel, and so that great power can move through us. Because our own physical strength or even our own mental strength, our, our own emotional strength cannot compare to that collective strength of source that we have the ability to open up to. So if we want to do this both individually and collectively as, as a unified consciousness, we all have that responsibility. We have to take accountability to say no to those behaviors that we're doing that's not okay for future generations and no to those behaviors that our kids are doing or that our elders, it doesn't, at this point, it doesn't matter what age, younger, older, it doesn't matter. We all have a duty, no matter how old you are, no matter where you're at in your life experience, to say no to those things that are not contributing to that world that we want to see manifest. If we want to reach this next level of strength, which is beyond just brute strength, physicality. Okay, for example, if someone can win a fight, a physical fight, and they're like, yeah, victory, but if you were using your true strength, your intuition, which is why it's a woman here, we all have that feminine force within us, that res receptive and ma magnetic force. If we were to use that power to be receptive, not active, to, to be receptive and open up to God's power, what would happen is that we would have foresight to avoid that fight entirely. And then no one would have to get hurt. Because guess what? If you won, that means someone lost. And that one is a part of the one. It's a part of you. So true strength lies in our ability to be receptive. And to be magnetic. To pull in those powers that already exist. We don't have to work out at the gym to make this strength. You know what I'm saying? This is a power that already exists infinitely. And so in order to tap into that, we need to activate our feminine force and we need to be receptive and magnetic to pull in that power. Magnetize that power. And that requires humility because it requires us knowing that it's, it's not us doing that, it's the one. So what do we need to do to get to that level of magnetism? That looks like cutting the cords to those things that are not serving you and not serving the one. And it also looks like many other things. It looks like taking care of yourself, taking care of your physical body, taking care of your heart, taking care of your mind, meditation, you know, relaxation, calming your nervous system, healing. Detoxing comes along with this card, detoxing, purifying. Whatever is going to help you to be in that receptive to source state and that magnetic to higher power state do that. Remember that it's not about the little details of our, our lives. It's not about Rebecca. It's not about Mary. It's not about John. It's not about Carlos. <laughs> it's about the one. It's time for us to think collectively, to think galactically. It's time to remember why we're here and to act from this archetypal place. If we want to heal the separation that occurred at the very beginning of time. Because every separation you're experiencing right now, every challenge you're experiencing right now, every single one is a reflection of the original emanation of light that formed all of creation. We're playing out these archetypal stories and we get so caught up in, in the material entanglement of our little stories and our little lives that we forget why we came here. So it's time for us to work for the collective and, and stop making excuses for our, our own behaviors and for the behaviors of those around us saying, yeah, maybe next lifetime. Yeah, it's okay. I just want to be comfortable. I feel secure. I'm not ready to break down that tower. No, like it's time to recognize your higher purpose and the higher cause. 
the divine plan unfolding, knowing that inevitably we must submit to this plan because that plan is a reflection of nature and of universal law. And as much as you might want to fight it and make excuses and distract yourself with bullshit, as much as you want to run away from it, you will never, there's no out. You can keep running, but it's a circle. You'll, you'll just come back to face yourself. So you can run and you can distract yourself for as long as you want. Take as many lifetimes as you want. The archetypal realm doesn't care about time. It's like, do whatever you need, make as many mistakes as you want, because whatever you manifest on that path of uh, the devil or the black magician, it's called in ancient Egypt, whatever you manifest from that space, eh, it's temporary anyway. It's almost like God or your higher self or the archetypes would look at you and say, eh, whatever. Mess up as much as you want because whatever you create from that space is impermanent anyway. Because when you die, that frequency of the, the crap that you created, it can't go with you. It just, it just can't. It doesn't ma match the frequency of the higher realms. All things that are temporary are not a reflection of the eternal nature of the place that we go when we move from this body. So you can mess up as many times as you want and you could take as long as you want, but why? Why not just realize the inevitability of returning to this path of truth and alignment with universal law and with nature and the divine plan? We must unite our smaller will with the will of the divine. It is inevitable. You can run as long as you want, but you will always come back to yourself. It will always catch up with you. Same thing with leaving this body, leaving this life and saying, I don't want to be here anymore. Well, guess what? There's no out. There's no out. You will return to pick up where you left off. The story is a circle. It's a ring. It's never ending. So how can we use this awareness of the bigger plan to stop making excuses, to do what we came to do with love, right? It's not the king of swords, just the intellect. No, we're talking about the heart here, the heart of the challenge. Stay in that space, but still do what you have to do, right? That's the queen of swords. Stay in that space, but still do what you have to do. Not for you, but for us and for the one. Stop making excuses. And when you feel like you want to make an excuse for your own behavior or other people, other people's behavior, return to this bigger picture, the divine plan, and realize, remember your purpose and your mission here. We're doing this. For this cut the cord stop making excuses let's reach that next level let's reach that next level of strength together as one thank you guys so much for tuning in I appreciate you so much and I see a lot of you keeping up with these activations every week and it's such a blessing to connect with you um, I look forward to seeing you for the new moon next week new moon activation this week, we did our class on the tower. But for those of you who don't know, we do a weekly, weekly live class on Zoom Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. MST. Um, and it's on the occult symbolism of the tarot. It's a little bit different from my book. Um, if you guys don't know, yes, I published a book in March. And it's called The Royal Path. Activating the archetypal alliance within. It's understanding how the cards aren't just cards. The tarot, which means royal path, is the one path. And these characters are personifications of aspects of your own self, your own mind, as well as the universal mind. They are aspects that are within you that can help you connect to all of us because we all, when we connect to those aspects, we connect to the root where they come from, the energetic root that they come from. So when you connect to your inner hermit, you're tapping into my hermit energy and the hermit energy, energy of the universe. And when you tap into your inner magician, you're tapping into that primordial force of energy of which we are all connected to. And you could pull in that power. So this book is about how to do that. It's on Amazon. You type in the Royal Path Activating and it will come up. Just the Royal Path Activating. If you want to receive one personally from me, I sign it with a special little symbol and my Hebrew name. And I make um, a handmade bookmark, which I happen to have right here. I make something like this. And I include those in every order when you order directly from me. Um, so the class is a little bit different. The weekly class is all on the occult symbolism. So the class with the book is kind of cool to do together, but not necessary. Um, the classes are all recorded for your convenience. And like I said, we just did 16, the tower yesterday. It was an awesome class. It went for like an hour and a half. The students who come to the class every week are amazing beings who share their perspective at the end of every class. And it's mind blowing. And it's not stuff you'll find in a book. 
super unique. The feedback has been great. People are really loving this course. I'm loving this course. We're all growing together. By the way, we have a private group on Facebook called The Royal Path. If you want to join because you're interested in, in what I'm sharing here or you want to hear um, a little bit about the classes because we share, uh, ex we extend the class sort of into this group. So if you're interested in learning more about archetypal awareness and activation, join The Royal Path. I have another group called Shabbat Crew and I post in there every Friday night, so I'll be posting tonight. I post about the mystical import of the current Torah story every week and just some um, mystical Judaism in general. So that's called Shabbat Crew. Again, the two groups are the Royal Path and Shabbat Crew. If you want to join the classes, it's okay that you haven't, uh, caught, you haven't been keeping up even though we're at class 16 because like I said, they're all recorded. So a lot of people will start with zero. I send you the recording. You let me know when you're ready for the next one. Some people will buy bundles, zero through four, whatever, and then let me know when they're ready for the next. Super easy, just give me your email. Each class is a $10 donation. That's it, $10. And these classes are an hour long, sometimes longer. Loaded with information. So let me know if there's something you're interested in. Go ahead and private message me. I am still available for one-on-one -on -one readings, but I'm only taking on one new client a month because my plate is very, very full right now. So I would love to hear from you if you're interested so that we can stay in touch and make that happen. And I just appreciate you guys. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. I'll see you for the new moon next week. Peace. Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm also on YouTube, you guys. So in case I ever get kicked off of Facebook for some reason, you could just go to youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic with a CK like it is here on Facebook and hit subscribe. That way you get notified when new videos are uploaded. And I've got lots of videos in there. Um, also videos on the manipulations within the tarot and other metaphysical topics and things like that. So if that's something you're interested in, find me on there. And that's it. Shalom.